Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Marcelo Wimuller Campioni. This presentation on writing silvicultural prescriptions is made in collaboration with Dr. Eli Sagor and the Sustainable Forestry Education Cooperative. Today we're going to be talking about silvicultural prescriptions. So just to make sure we're all on the same page, our definition of a silvicultural prescription is a document which has a planned series of treatment designed to change current stand structure and composition of a stand to meet management goals and objectives. So this prescription document um, can come in a lot of forms. Each organization likely has their own type of form, their own way of developing the prescription um, with information that is gathered before the prescription is implemented and how um, it's written up and how it is then um, applied. So a prescription generally considers the ecological, economic, and societal objectives and goals. So just like we've talked about in silviculture, we use silviculture to meet multiple objectives. So um, these prescriptions are the format, are the framework, are, are kind of written words to meet those multiple objectives. Some of you are in the National Advanced Silviculture Program, NASP, and the reason is because in the Forest Service, the silviculture prescriptions are prepared or reviewed by a certified silviculturist prior to implementing the project or treatment. Let's continue. So this presentation provides context. I'm not going to go into the how-to because each prescription, each organization, each almost agency, Every office has a way of how you as an individual, as you as an organization, are going to write that prescription. What I do want to talk about is making sure these prescriptions can be implemented by more than just the writer. So making sure we develop prescriptions that really encompass and allow us to acknowledge and define our goals and objectives, making sure they're clear, and making sure that we're thinking about both the present and the future. So forests are long-lived, and depending on where you live, um, that rotation may be within your lifetime, or the cutting cycles may be within your lifetime. For others, uh, <laughs> this may be hundreds if not thousands of years we're talking about of development of uh, forest um, change and so it's, it's likely that you may write this prescription or you may have developed these goals and objectives um, but you may not be the one implementing it even if you stay in the same place your entire career there may be someone else that implements this prescription at some point so what we need to really focus in on are goals and objectives. They are really key. And these goals and objectives, and I cannot stress this enough, they provide a roadmap. This is where we are going. They provide the ability to think about adaptive management and flexibility. We don't, we can't predict what is going to happen in the future. So we need that flexibility. And that's not even thinking about climate change, which is a whole nother kind of issue when we talk about adaptive management. And then finally, the future. We're always looking towards what is next. So in silviculture, we, we account for the past, we look at the current, but we're always looking towards that future, especially when we think about desired future conditions. So when we're thinking about writing a prescription, let's use this as an exercise. So this is Lake State's focus. So we have a red pine dominant forest. If you don't have red pine in your area, substitute with your dominant species. So ponderosa pine, um, short or one of the southern pines. So if you're watching from outside of the Lake State, substitute with a different pine species. But So red pine is our dominant species. Uh, we have less than 10% in our basal area of eastern white pine and balsam fir. It's a single species stand, so pretty even aged, um, about 150 square feet of ba basal area. Our average diameter is 14 inf inches, and we're going to assume good straight wood, and there is a market. So I want you to pause this lecture and write me a prescription. So, as we unpause, here's what I developed. So my answer, let's do a clear-cut re reserve. So we're going to reserve all eastern white pine. 
Remove all red pine and reduce any advanced regeneration of balsam fir. Summer harvest with the goal of scarification. Regeneration, I'm going to add additional, I'm going to plant, so artificial regeneration of red pine at 400 stems per acre and bug capping during the winter. That sounds like a pretty solid plan, but what am I missing? What are my goals? Why did I choose to do these things? This is a great, this is a plan. This is just one of numerous acceptable plans when we think about silviculture, because I, I address what I'm harvesting. I'm doing a regeneration harvest. I addressed how I'm doing my regeneration. And in the future, I would talk about tending. But I don't account for anything of why I'm doing this. What are my goals? Does this treatment actually meet my goals? We have no idea. So someone, a future forester, could get this and not know where I was trying to go with this. So what are my goals? What are my objectives? Are my objectives, to, or are my goals to focus on timber production? Is it to increase structural diversity? Is it to reduce uh, susceptibility of forest health issues, including, say, diplodia? Is it to reduce fire risk? We have no idea why I am doing what I'm doing. And that's really important because if we don't know why we're doing it, we don't we can't actually develop treatments that are that meet those goals and objectives. So let's talk about steps to consider in prescription development. Number one, the most important one your goals and objectives and hopefully if you were when you were taking that time to write your prescription you wrote down that first you wrote down your goals and objectives first we evaluate existing stand conditions we identify the options so there are always options we're never we never just have one way we can manage we always have options we develop a target stand in relationship to the goals and objectives and then we write and implement the prescription. So we see this writing and implementing the prescription. This is after we do all these other steps. So that goals and objectives are really key and I'm going to keep stressing that. So let's talk about goals and objectives. So goals and objectives. So a goal is broad general and generally not quantifiable so these are these big picture ideas where your objectives is precise specific and quantifiable or measurable so that's the big difference and a great resource is chapter three in the in the adaptation workbook produced um, by NIACS, which is the Northern Institute of Applied Climate Science. The citation is down here, as well as the PDF. That is a great resource when we're thinking not only in terms of developing um, goals and objectives, but also thinking about the broader picture of silvicultural prescriptions and adaptive management. So a goal could be to maintain wildlife habitat for a variety of species. Again, broad, not quantifiable, and kind of sets us up, sets this bigger picture up. Whereas our objectives might be implement silvicultural treatments within five years in order to increase the oak component of selected stand and enhance wildlife habitat. So we have five years, we could add how much we want to add that oak component. So we want to at least a 15% increase in the oak component over our base. So we can keep adding more additional details, but this is a quantifiable aspect of what we want to do to increase or maintain wildlife habitat. So I want you to take a minute, pause the lecture, and think about, do you know how both stand and landscape level goals are determined in your organization? How about objectives? So as we unpause the lecture, this is something really good to consider because as you um, are thinking about silvicultural prescriptions, it's really good to have that base, to have that understanding of where this information is going, how it is developed. So evaluating existing stand conditions. This is a whole separate lecture and we have Dr. Tom Burke 
who already recorded a great lecture on inventory for silvicultural decision making. So uh, check this out. It's a great lecture, but this is this is forest inventory, and Tom does a great job talking about that. So identifying options or alternatives. So we can do conventional management. We can explore alternatives. And remember, no management is always an option. And this is not to say one is better than the other, but we want to think about not only what has been done in the past, but what maybe we want to change. So thinking about how conventional management has worked, where are the shortcomings, exploring alternatives, what may it improve, what are the trade-offs, and also thinking, again, if we don't do anything, what happens? So no management is an action. It's the act of not acting is choosing no management. And I think that's something that we need to remember and need to, as we think about why we're developing, why we're treating, it's because if we don't treat, we usually see something happening that we don't want or we're trying to not allow it, whether it's a forest health issue, whether it's fire prevention or increasing resistance to fire. There's all these reasons we do silvicultural treatments. It's because we can see if we don't treat, something may happen that we, we are trying not to happen. So I think we need to be more vocal about what that no management means. So finally, we're getting into developing a target stand in relationship to our objectives and goals. So we've, we've de defined our objectives and goals, we've evaluated our stands, we've thought about our options. Now what does that mean? What does that look like? So, and this is where our desired future conditions, or DFCs, um, and these are great because this is this is you thinking into the future and it's the description of a land or resource conditions that are believed necessary if goals and objectives are fully achieved. So this is your if I can control everything if everything goes as planned this is what you want that stand to look like. So they're quantitative, they're clear, and they're related to the goals. And this quantitative and clear are really key. So you want to be able to check uh, check them off. And that's, there's little check boxes. So knowing that, yep, I got a minimum of 200 trees per hectare. I got a minimum of 10 residual trees left standing. You want to be able to quantify them. So you can say, yes, I did meet my desired future conditions. So now we're finally into the writing of the prescription. And again, I'm not going to tell you how to write the prescription, but I want to remind you that when you're writing this, write with the assumption someone else will be implementing your prescription. So be, for, be sure to define what, why, and how. So what are you doing? Why are you doing? And that relates to your goals and objectives. And how do you want to do it? Clarify. Or clarity, don't assume. Don't assume, um, especially be clear with your terminology. So use our terminology, use the silvicultural dictionaries, use that, use those terms, because those provide a lot of meanings and they provide clarity in what we're doing and why we're doing it. Your expectations, again, going back to your goals and objectives. And again, your future. What are your DFCs? What are your desired future conditions? And as we're th thinking about that future, I have to, of course, put in this adaptive management cycle. So again, thinking about this in terms of not a linear framework, but this kind of framework that builds, that can change, that, again, identifies issues, monitors it, and thinks about how different things are happening, how there's flexibility, how things are unexpected, and how we keep moving it forward. So finally, thinking about writing prescriptions, we're thinking about not only what's happening in that first zero to five years, so especially when we think about from a a logistical or legal standpoint, there is a, there's a window that you need to get certain policy things implemented, depending if that is within your organization. So, But remember, how does this meet your goals and objectives, and what is the silvicultural system? 
And then thinking about this longer term, did you provide a framework? Is there flexibility? And how are you monitoring and evaluating? So did you provide the framework, the base to allow someone in the future to use your prescription as a base and think about where, where they want to go? So just in review, someone else may implement your prescription or have to follow up on it. Goals and objectives are key. Again, they provide this roadmap. They provide you this framework for adaptive management with flexibility. And again, we're always looking into the future, looking towards what is next. Always. So with that, we're going to end today and depending on what time of the year you're look, looking at it, um, we'll leave you on this nice little snowman from June. So again, I'm Marcella Wimmuller Campioni. If you have any questions, my email is down at the bottom, mwind at uofm.edu.